Hey everyone, it's Brandy and you're watching Abstract Crafter. In today's video, we have the next product up for examination in the great sealing experiments that I am conducting here on my channel. And we will be looking at Judicant's Diamond Glazed Water-Based Dimensional Adhesive, which is mixable. So, if you're curious about how this works and what it looks like, then just keep on watching and we will get into that in just a few moments. Well, hello everyone! Welcome back! And if you are new to my channel, hello! Welcome! I'm glad that you guys stop by today to spend a little bit of time with me while I uh, conduct some sealing experiments on different diamond painting things. So, from the intro, you know that we're going to be working with Judikin's Diamond Glaze. It sounds like it's perfect for this, right? So, I have used this in jewelry making, so I'm kind of curious how it'll hold up. Um, I don't think we'll need to do like poured and brushed. I think we'll just be able to do brushed. I have blue stickers this time. I always try to get ones where it's obvious about the sparkle beforehand. And as you know from previous experiments, this is where we are at. We have the triple thick, the mod podge, dimensional magic poured and brushed, the Tombow aqua poured and brushed. And we also did resin, which is not on this sheet. I'm working on getting making that a thing to be added to this sheet so that everything is all together in one spot. And then um, I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on what we're going to do. I want to get right into it because you should know the drill by now. We're going to do a sticker, um, half of an accessory, squares and round canvas, and see how it holds up on all. And then I'll add glitter to part of it and go from there. So I'm running out of space on my canvases. So this may be the last one in which this one appears. And I already need to come into this one. I've avoided using this one because it's so light colored that it might not show off as much as I'm hoping. I could start going on this side, I suppose, but I don't know. I guess we'll see. So let's get right into it and get set up. Um, this is again, it's a water-based dimensional adhesive. It says that you can work directly over artwork for a raised glass-like finish. You can thin it with water for a lacquer-like finish. And it's the best adhesive for gluing glitter, beads, glass, plastic, and vellum to paper. So, and you can clean this up with water when it's wet. This stuff will can be kind of expensive depending on the time and who's selling it but um either way it'll be linked down below so let's just jump right into it so i'm gonna this side has the tombow on it so we'll s go to this side and work on one that doesn't have anything so that we have a clear canvas and then we will do the little whale and i'm kind of curious on how it's gonna cover that stickiness there. So I'm going to get zoomed in and set up so that you can see my technique and then I'll do the canvases off camera and the glitter I will also do off camera. So I think what I'm going to do since there's two styles of finishes that you can get from this is I'll do this whale like this with just straight up judikins and then for the elephant, I will thin it out with water to get that lacquer-like finish. And we'll see if one is better than the other. And of course, I will add glitter where I see fit. So as usual, all I'm going to do is brush it in there, trying to cover the stickiness, but not going over the borders of the actual sticker. And we'll just see how, how it works with everything. I don't really foresee a problem. Like I said, I use this in jewelry making and it's an amazing product. It's the only product that I will use as an adhesive in jewelry making. Uh, I do use the Mod Podge Dimensional Magic for some aspects of 
the actual necklaces that I make, but for the most part, I just use this, and I mostly use it as an adhesive, really. I don't, I haven't tried using it as a topper. I may have experimented, I guess I take that back. I may have experimented with it, but for the most part, I just like putting it on the actual pieces that I'm making into necklaces so that they have a nice clear finish to them. And they always turn out amazing. It always enhances the colors too on my pieces. So not that I expect that to happen on diamond paintings, but I'm hoping that it'll be nice and glossy afterwards. So I gotta be very careful up here because there's not a whole a lot of room to go over like, without permanently adhering the sticker to the backing. All right. I'm gonna probably add glitter to that little section when I get to the glitter portion, but yeah, this stuff, it's already very water-like, so it'll be interesting to see what actually adding water to it will do. But we're almost done here. This is very quick to use because it's so thin. And as always, I will let this set up for 24 hours so that it has proper time to dry and cure. And now I'm just going to run my brush through to make sure I get in all of those little grooves. This isn't going to be like the dimensional magic where it stays on its own. Wherever you place it, it is very watery, so it's going to move around quite a bit. And I have not had to ever worry about overworking this. It does clean up extremely easily. All right, so that's done. Let's see. I'm really curious about what it's going to do to the gems. Because I know, like I said, I'm not going to, I don't want to be a broken record here, but I know what how it works with other products. So, and everything else so far, except for the Tombow, has dulled the actual shine when it comes to the bigger gems. So, it, it, it like leaves this weird layer on there. Almost everything, I guess I should have said that would have been more appropriate. Almost everything. It has dulled the sparkle, so. But this is probably one of the clearest adhesives I've ever worked with. I guess there's a reason why this is so highly recommended in jewelry making communities and stuff. And I'm going to leave those middle gems alone so we have something to compare to when it comes to the other side I'll need them blank I guess for now it wouldn't really matter but see look at that I already have hairs and stuff stuck in there from the animals I have three cats and a dog so animal hair is inevitable yeah I really like how easily this brush is in and it immediately has this like really beautiful finish and I know I sealed the edges already but I want to make sure the edges of this particular piece are nice and sealed in as well. So I guess it's just going to be a double layer on that edge. And then the last thing is to come over this big gem. Alright, so I'm going to go off camera and finish all the sealing on the canvases and as I have in the last few videos, I will come back and show you before we set them up to dry and cure for the next 24 hours. So I will see you in just a split second. I will also thin it out and do this sticker after. It's so that we can see um, what, it, what, if any, difference it's going to make. So I better mark it thinned because I always forget after the 24 hours. Um, plain? <laughs> I don't know what to put. Okay, so I'll see you in just a second. Well, all right. I always say this, but man, that was fun. 
I don't know when I can actually get into it and I'm not under the pressure of filming and talking at the same time. I can get stuff done. So a lot of these, the first round is already dry to the touch. So it's very fast drying, but we're still going to allow it time to cure. You know, just because I did it with everything else. <laughs> so let's just, the first glance at these before the curing. So there is the butterfly. And you can already see, ooh, that I'm going to drop it that you can see the glitter on the side that's not done a lot more than the side that is done and that is really sparkling oh my and you can see a little bit on this side but keep in mind it's not all the way done so then we did the brushed on sticker here and yeah it's still got a lot of sparkle to it uh, this is where I thinned it out and used it more as a lacquer. And I, the method I used was 30 water, 70 glue. So, and being wet, you can still see a ton of sparkle. So thinning it out is probably going to be the way to go. And it's pretty well dry already as well. Uh, onto the canvas. The rounds, I just finished up with that. So you're still seeing quite a bit. Thinning it out, though, you get a lot of air bubbles, but don't stress if that happens to you because they do seem to pop on their own, and if nothing else, keep a toothpick with you, and you can pop them with a toothpick. It just happens when you're going over the drills themselves, and then right here on the squares, I did longer strips, and you can see that it's it didn't take anything away. It, Thinning it out was the better way to go, or adding glitter. Where it is just plain, it doesn't seem to have as much of a shine. But again, I just finished these. So let's let these guys sit for at least 12 hours, but I'll try to do 24. And we will see how everything turns out. Well, all right, it has been a little over 24 hours. I got busy with things so this one got to sit for a while and I kind of looked at it a little bit last night and it had dried it was dry to the touch and it's very flexible as you can see it snapped right when I did that but um I have thoughts <laughs> the pictures will probably be a little bit more telling so immediately well with the rounds it's gonna be a little bit harder because I it's just mostly white I went about to here on all of them so this is just full strength glitter added and then thinned out with a solution of 70% glue and 30% water you could adjust that uh, to your preferences obviously so you can see it I mean it maintained the glitter effect that you get with rounds so it it did do a good job and then right over the words on all of the canvases so far I have done this where I went over it so I mean I don't mind it I look I'll tell you more of my thoughts when we you know get to the pros and cons portion and then on the squares, it, you can kind of tell where it goes because that's where the canvas is naturally trying to bend. So it's about right here. I tried to be as even as possible. And we have the full strength here, the glitter here, and the thinned out here. And if you don't remember from the beginning of the video, the um, it says here that you can use it directly over for a raised glass like finish and if you thin it with water it's a lacquer like finish so it basically thins it out but you can see it still maintained the sparkle and you wouldn't even know that there was a sealant on it except for how stiff it is and it does crack a lot but i don't know if that's a bad thing or a good thing honestly <laughs> All of them crack, if that helps. So when you look at it this way, ah, see, it's so hard to show you. I mean, in real life, 
it feels like nothing is different. And then when we look at our key ring, so this is the side here with the diamond glaze on it. And then I did go over the big gems as well. And the nice thing is that this is the second one in this little experiment. This side being the Tombow where it didn't affect the gems. Oop. Every other one has so far. And the way I can tell which one is which is the Tombow side has glitter over the center and this side does not. I try to do that purposely so that I know <laughs> which one is which, but so you can see that you still, it maintained everything and this was full strength. This was not thinned out. I mean, if I flip it the other way, I mean, obviously the side without it is significantly more glittery, but up close, it just, it looks a lot more glassy and it really did enhance these bigger gems not by a ton but a little bit and then whereas like the Tombow didn't really and you get the same effect where it's hard to really you know get that glitter you still get a little bit of a sparkle but not like you would when it's plain by itself so on to the stickers this is thinned out and then this is directly on there. And then I did a second coat over the water and around the border. And I've been trying to do that so that I know which one is full strength on whatever project I'm working with. So with the thinned one, you can really see how it maintained that sparkle beautifully. And so I think the way to go with this is definitely thinned out. I mean... You still get a lot of sparkle on this one, but it's not as intense as the lacquer finish. And you'll be able to see that from the pictures themselves. So I'm going to start that slideshow here while I talk about pros and cons of the Judikins Diamond Glaze. So I like that you can decide if you want... A thicker finish a glass like finish or the thinner lacquer like finish I do like that a lot I like the lacquer finish above all because it thins it out then it has a more natural finish to it but it does protect the pieces especially on rounds which I, I'm gonna sound like a broken record but those are the ones that I worry about more than anything because of the gaps and the potential for stuff to get caught in, in between the drills where the gaps are. Uh, because obviously, no company has really figured out how to just keep that glue right on the spot where the drills go. And with squares, it really, it's more of covering the tops and around the sides to kind of keep them from popping off or where, like I said, where there's gaps. But I think the need for sealant is stronger on rounds and on accessories uh some cons with this is it is incredibly thin and really you got to be careful it is so easy to accidentally put too much on there and the other thing which will probably have been showing up in the pictures is it does create a lot of bubbles as you're brushing over more so on the rounds i noticed it than anywhere else but it does create a lot of air bubbles, most of which will pop on their own. But I did notice on a few of the pieces that that did not happen. And in fact, it shows through the piece and it kind of looks cakey in between those drills where those are actually air bubbles trapped in there. Now you can eliminate those ahead of time by simply uh, keeping a toothpick handy and popping them as you go. And even on the canvas, I can see a lot of those air bubbles. And, it, and also, that can be eliminated by simply not over brushing it or just applying it directly on there and using the nozzle itself to kind of direct the flow, if you will. Uh, you might end up with a lot more waste that way. Um, it does keep the drills in place. It, they're not as easy to move as 
they are by themselves. And I really do like, on these accessories especially, I really like the way it looks on there. Now, yes, it does take away some of the natural sparkle, but where it takes away that sparkle, it makes up for with the glassy finish. And it makes the silvery diamond ones look like real diamonds. And the diamond glaze is the the first one that coats the gems and enhances them versus dulling them, like the bigger gems. Especially on the butterfly where the white ones are that have like the cuts in them. And I don't know if the slide shows over, but what I'm talking about are the little white ones. They have like a series of six cuts on them. And those are where a lot of product will get trapped and you lose an, the effect on them more than any other of the special gems. And I don't know if I have the other one handy, but even on this blue butterfly, I think that side has not been touched. Every product so far has taken away from that and it has left some kind of coating on the those and more specifically the diamonds so those are the ones that really seem to get affected by all the sealants and so so far the diamond glaze has really done a great job to enhance now the tombow aqua glue is very close behind on those bigger gems so now you can kind of see why people love the diamond glaze for jewelry making but I would say if you can't get oh I just ripped off some diamonds that were awkwardly on there um I would say if you're having trouble getting the diamond glaze because I know it took me a while before I was able to actually get it then the Tombow is going to be an a really good alternative they are very similar in finish not necessarily in text like beginning textures and the liquid and viscosity and all that stuff that's where they differ but ultimately in the end they look so similar it's pretty un unreal so that's where we are now and as I wait for more glazes and stuff to come the next ones will be more non-traditional ones i gotta get some sprays i got mod podges coming and i know in the dimensional magic one i kept saying mod podge i don't know why i kept doing that it was driving me nuts mod podge but i have a few sprays some aliens spray i have some more canvas finishes that i am looking into i have a big list it's growing every time i start looking at different sealants my list just gets bigger and bigger every time but let me show you the next few products that I have for us to kind of look at. So while I'm waiting on more sealants to arrive, I do have the original Mod Podge. And with this one, I'm going to, I haven't done it with the exception of the Judikins where I thinned it out. But this is one that I will try that with because that was recommended and I'll do that one um, for the next experiment. I do want to try a puzzle glue because... You know, um, for obvious reasons, it seals puzzles very nicely with a clear coat. And this stuff is super affordable, easy to find. So I thought this might be a good thing to try and see what it looks like. And then I do want to try some different craft quick dry glues just to see what happens. More for stickers and accessories and stuff like that. But there was also a suggestion. Now, mind you, this is not going to be the uh, official one that I'll use, but... Something like this, a gel um, style top coat. This is not a gel polish, but I do have a gel polish and then just like a regular top coat that was given as a suggestion to try it for sealants. So there's all that kind of stuff. If there's something else that I am missing besides Mod Podge, any of them, I have a pearl, a glitter, extreme glitter, super gloss, and then all the sprays coming or in my wish list so those will all be those are already all covered if there's anything besides those or anything that i've showed you uh let me know if you want to see something more artsy like if one of these that i've already done that you like a lot but you want to see more experiments with those like 
with the aqua glue if you would like to see this thinned out or with some kind of other additive besides the holographic glitter that I tend to use. Whatever suggestions you have, please leave them down below. Let me know all of your thoughts and opinions on what you think about the Judikins Diamond Glaze, both thinned out and full strength or with glitter. I mean, I'm always going to love the glitter look. Personally, when I seal things, that's what I will do is thin it out and add glitter. And at this point, being where we are in the experiments themselves, the Judikins is my pick so far. This is the one I would go to because I have it happen to have it on hand. And then I would go with the aqua glue. And I will, like I said, try thin, thinning it out and seeing how that works. But right now, my top pick is this Diamond Glaze for most everything. Uh, the rounds, I'm having a little bit of trouble making a decision on that. So far, I think that the winner for the round canvases may just be this Tombow Aqua. But um, I... I have further things to do with those. And maybe the pictures will change my mind. Maybe your comments will change my mind. Um, so I also wanted to um, come back and show you that the Dimensional Magic, it had uh, buckled in the middle of the sticker where I tried to make it a puffy sticker. And this is where I just kind of poured the whole thing and not obviously brushed it on and it is not wanting to lay flat in fact I just snapped it so keep that in mind that it is not good for stickers in that way um, the way you would want to do that then is place your piece on the project especially if it's like something like this and I had place it on the project and then adhere it first and then come back in and brush it over. I would not recommend making a puffy sticker out of it. So that is the, the next thing I'm going to try to figure out is how to make puffy stickers because that's the kind of sticker I like. Um, but that's where I'm going to leave you today. Uh, make sure that you subscribe if you have not done so already. Hit the thumbs up so that the video will get seen more. It'll catch the eyes of the YouTube gods and help recommend my video to more and more people, thus helping our wonderful, amazing, beautiful family grow. And then hit that notification bell so that you will always be updated when I upload more videos just like this one. And with that, I will let you go. Have an awesome day. Have fun doing whatever it is that truly, truly makes you happy. I love you, friends, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.